Hi, everyone. I want to take you to the early days of COVID-19 pandemic. So in the early days, Peter Goodchild, an 84-year-old uh, art gallery owner, shared an important post on Facebook. This post included detailed medical advice about COVID-19 pandemic, including some of these uh, details, which turned out to have no factual basis later on. However, at the time, it sounded very truthy. It allegedly came from a friend whose uncle was a physician at a hospital in China. And in a matter of days, Peter post went viral. It was shared by hundreds of thousands of other people. But initially, Peter didn't know whether this information was accurate. And naturally, everybody was looking this type of information, right? And he shared with others. But what is more interesting about this story from my research perspective is that even when Peter learned that this information was completely fake, he didn't change his sharing behavior. You would think that he would become a little more careful, right, to not to spread misinformation. And during a deadly pandemic, if you spread misinformation, it turns out that people could actually die. But in a BBC interview, he explained that he has seen many fact-checking messages later on saying that, no, the post is not correct, or the people in the post were not real, or the events did not happen. All these warning signs did not stop Peter from spreading more information later on. So in my research, this is a very interesting case to me. And in my research, I'm studying the effect of social media habits on people's sharing of misinformation. My work actually takes the current wisdom beyond and examines that actually maybe it's not people are just cognitively lazy or biased, but there is something in their social media environment that makes them more, more vulnerable to share misinformation. Um, so how do we build social media have, and in my work, I'm studying you know, the impact of social media habits. But one question that you might be wondering is that, how do we build social media habits? So how do we spread misinformation? So you build information sharing habits on social media in the same way you build any other habit. You do the behaviors that lead you the rewards, repeating most of these behavior until they become automatic and unconscious. But on social media, if you think about it, the rewards are social, right? You gain attention, you build connections uh, through likes, reshares, and new followers. So when you're new on a platform, you don't know which posts are going to get you those rewards. So, but you learn through practice. You share some posts, and that gets you rewards. And you share other posts, you don't get any rewards, unfortunately. But over time, you repeat the behaviors that led you the rewards. And eventually, your behavior becomes more automatic, and you basically um, you, you respond automatically to the cues in your social media environment. And you don't really need to think about what you're doing much of the time. And you don't have to evaluate whether the information is true or false. And the more habitual you become on these platforms, actually, the less thinking you have to do. And over time, you become like a pigeon pecking at a button with the hopes of getting food, but you don't realize it. And to test the effect of social media habits, my co-authors uh, and I uh, conducted a series of experiments with over 2,000 social media users. And in these experiments, we gave the social media users a set of true and false headlines. And they look like this. So the look and the feel of these headlines were very similar to what you would uh, encounter on Facebook. And we asked them whether they would share this information online. We also measured how often they shared information on Facebook particularly, which is a measure of their social media habits. And the results were fascinating. When people had weaker habits, the ones you see on the left, you know, did not share much of the information as you would expect, right? I mean, the bars are very low. 
And what is more important is that they were also sensitive to the truthfulness of the information more so. So they shared only half of the false headlines than the true headlines. But people with stronger uh, social media habits, the ones on the right that you see here, they did much of the sharing, right? I mean, the bars are much higher than the uh, other bars you see here. And what is more striking and unfortunate for us is that they were completely insensitive to the truthfulness of the information. As you can see here, there was very little, and in statistical terms, no difference between the headlines, true headlines, and the false headlines they shared on these platforms. And there is one uh, additional point, uh, interesting point to the story is that when asked, Every one of us want to share accurate information, although we don't do it all the time, as I have shown you earlier. Right? And because we don't realize that, actually, our behavior is not driven by our motivation on these platforms. They are driven by our habits that we build on these platforms. So be, these findings have very important implications for how we combat misinformation. If we assume that misinformation uh, spreading behavior is driven by people's cognitive capacities or their biases, then we focus our attention on providing them with accurate information or debunking the myths. But if we recognize that misinformation uh, spreading behavior is driven by the um, on social media platforms and the reward structure on these platforms, then we can design different interventions. And my co-authors and I decided to test what happens if we change the reward structure on these platforms. Um, so with that, we, this, we recruited again our participants, uh, and we gave them one of the two different rewards in this case. And in the reward, accuracy reward condition, we rewarded people for sharing accurate information and not sharing misinformation. And in the misinformation reward condition, we rewarded people for sharing uh, misinformation and not sharing accurate information. So the rewards were actually working in opposite directions, right? Um, and in the experimental conditions, as you would expect, people acted in line with the reward. Whatever we rewarded them, they did it in the experimental conditions. However, what we were interested in is what happens when we take away the rewards. That's how you test habits in my field. So you reward the desired behavior, and then you take away the rewards, and then see whether the behavior sticks. And in next, we gave them a different set of headlines, true and false again. They decided whether they would like to share or not, but this time there was no reward attached to it. And I was uh, heartened and surprised to see that our new reward structure, you see on the right this time, uh, led people into forming new habits, and the habits that actually you would like to see. When we rewarded people for sharing accurate information, that's what they did, as you can see on the right, right? I mean, they shared more accurate information than misinformation. But when we rewarded people for sharing misinformation, as you can see on the left, Unfortunately, they continue to do that even when we remove the rewards. So this tells us that we have to reward the behavior that we want to see on these social platforms. So in summary, this, my findings are suggesting that we, we, need to, we can reduce misinformation sharing behavior, but we need a new reward structure that focuses people on accuracy rather than popularity of the information. So if we, we can accomplish this by changing the reward structure on these platforms, but we will be less likely to accomplish this if we focus on people's you know, individual actions, such as reminding people for fact-checking and providing information about the accuracy, and these are not going to solve our problems. And in summary, my findings suggest that if Peter's initial post if you remember, I have shown you the earlier, hadn't received so much viral attention, probably Peter would have formed different sharing habits. However, 
people like Peter, like you, like me, if we continue uh, getting the social rewards and recognition, even when we share misinformation, unfortunately, we will continue to do so. Um, and we can change the misinformation spreading behavior if we change the reward structure on these platforms. Let's focus on the uh, behavior change by focusing on the social platforms and let's save lives. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Gizem.